when he's writing it. Uh, Saturday is his memorization day, you know, he, and he's rigorous. I, I found that I, that kind of rigor doesn't, mm. I'm, I'm self-motivated enough to know that I'll get it done and not procrastinate it too much. But I think if there's something to that, if you're somebody who knows that you're going to, your tendency is going to be to put it off to just setting like a schedule, Tuesday, I do this, Wednesday, yeah. I do Friday, I do this, you know, on and on. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just came across like the most convicting thing of my life just a moment ago. Um, it's about procrastination. Uh, it's that, oh, my internet cut out. And actually you're paused too. We'll have to edit this out. You there? I'm here. I can hear you just fine. Oh, you can, you can hear me mumbling to myself. Okay. <laughs> I just, okay. just leave it going well, if that happens. So I just left it going. Sure. Now, now that you're back or now that I'm back, really, uh, this is uh, Rosie O'Neill said this, procrastination is the arrogant assumption that God owes you another chance to do tomorrow what he gave you a chance to do today. Which, is, uh, convicting which story. Thing? <laughs> that's yeah, you, you said uh, before we started, you wanted to go through some law and gospel. I'll just preempt that and say, that's some heavy law right there. <laughs> okay. Is, is, is the gospel hidden within it? Or do you think that's merely um, a, a lost David with it. no hope? I didn't hear it. Um, so okay. maybe, you know, I've, one of the things, procrastination is a funny thing. So I've been self-employed a good part of my life. Um, and or, um, this going to sound really arrogant, or, and or the boss um, for a decent part of my life. And when you're in those two positions, there aren't usually a lot of people telling you, okay, today I need you to do this, 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 and this, and this, 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 and this. And so, yeah. you, you know, if, um, if you procrastinate, the person that pays for that um, is, is you. Now, if you're sort of tyrannical and being a boss, the, per, the people who pay for that will be your subordinates, right? But if you're sort of just an honest person who procrastinates, you're, you're the one that's going to pay for that. But one of the things I've learned is that, um, that people tend um, towards uh, – being procrastinators or not. Um, and sure, you can change that. Um, you could work to change that. Um, I think it's better just to know your tendencies um, than to sort of just ride yourself about it. Like if you know your tendencies, i.e. my buddy Paul, um, set yourself a schedule and then make that schedule sort of the routine. Now, is that a law to you? Sure it is. But that doesn't, just because you say something is a law statement doesn't make the law bad. Um, even if we're talking oh, capital. Yeah capital L law as, as given to us by God. Um, this is obviously not bad because he decreed it and we know that he is good, but in being um, not bad, it can still be convicting. And, and in fact, okay. one of the things that we would say is that uh, the law always accuses. Um, the law may motivate to, it may uh, teach as well. It may be a pedagogue, um, may teach you as well. But one of the things that it, all, it may restrain and keep order, and it certainly does do that, um, but it always accuses. It always accuses. Um, and that's just something to know about. It. That's something to know about it when you're a pastor. It's something to know about it when you're raising children. It's something to know about it if, you're, if you manage people. It's just something to know about it that you may tell somebody, um, you know, and as a pastor, you may preach and sort of give the list of things that will uh, lead you to a godly life. And you got to know that there are going to be at least a decent number of people in your pews that are experiencing that as conviction. Mm -hmm. And um, then what, which is why I'd always say it's not, it's uh, every sermon needs to have law and gospel, but I do believe every sermon needs to end on the gospel. Um, people okay. need to be free from that conviction um, before they walk out the door. The law is not, especially if we're talking little L law, right? Law is not um, unique to the church. It's, it's, it's part of our everyday experience. Uh, kids know this more than, more than we do, I think. And um, we've, we've uh, adapted law as habit. And so it's just sort of habit to us, but kids still experience law as law because they have very little control and um, it's convicting. And, you know, it's not a bad thing, but, the convicted needs a release and that's why Christ died to release the convicted. So let's give them the thing that we do have. Uh, let's give them Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So, so coming back to my, my pithy quote that I found about 
procrastination. And, and then the author also, you know, drags God into it as well. Yeah. Um, saying that, you know, God gave you the time and you're arrogantly assuming that he, that he will give you more time. Yeah. So yeah, I, I read that. And, and, and rather than you being like, Oh, Mike, that's killer quotes. You were like, that's, that's law. So does, <laughs> is, is there, is there room for that at all in sure. a sermon? Like if you're teaching through Proverbs about slothfulness, like to have a convicting statement like that, should, should that be there? I think, I think, um, let me, in a sermon, let me, let me cogitate on that for just a half a second here. I okay. think uh, every sermon ought to be convicting. Um, you know, at every point at every, every sermon, um, the law, the actual law, the heavy duty law needs to be proclaimed. Um, in other words, the hitman and the midwife thing comes back again. Um, okay, yeah. but I'm not sure that that quote is a hitman quote. I think that might be more of a nanny quote, a clean up your room quote. Um, you know, a wagging your finger at somebody who's naughty quote. Um, mm -hmm. I actually like to see less wagging fingers in, in preaching. And I'd love to see more actually slaying, uh, killing the sinner, um, breaking them down. Um, totally. Um, I'm not sure that would break me down. That might annoy me a little bit, but what? Okay. Just, yeah, it, there's some truth in the statement that God might not give me a tomorrow. Um, but chances are, uh, he will. Uh, and you know, sometimes the thing that was burdening me today is just as well done tomorrow as today. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, I would love to see more law in sermons, but I'd actually like to see the law in sermons, like the law, like okay. you are a poor, miserable sinner. You have no hope apart from Christ. You um, can't good. even manage your time. What makes you think that you can stand before a, a righteous God? The Amen. Alpha and the Omega. Yeah. Do that. One. That's great. That's, that is not wagging your finger. That's actually part of who I am. You just, you just uh, cut me to the quick, attacked me at the core of who I am as a sinner. Amen. Do that all day long. Okay, and then how, how, can, how can the gospel then be applied to the, the, the procrastinator, the poor time management person who's, who's maybe just been cut to the quick and exposed by, by, by God's word, or perhaps even just by a quote from, from Rosie O'Neill? Yeah, well, the funny thing is, is that um, telling somebody that they're a procrastinator yeah. doesn't... Um, doesn't even necessarily require the God, the gospel per se. It maybe just requires um, some good advice, you know, and that's why I'd say that's not even, that's, that's not gospel. It's not even really good law for a sermon. Now what you said um, when you said, you know, you can't even manage your time. How do you think you can stand before a holy God? Okay. Now that's the law. That's different than saying, um, oh, come on, do better, do better for Jesus, because God might, he gave you an opportunity today. That's, you know, that's, that's different than you looking at me as my preacher, as my pastor, yeah. and saying, you can't even manage your time here. What makes you think you're holy enough to save yourself? Now, how's, what's the gospel application to that? Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forgive you your sins. I forgive all of them, the ones that you're aware of, including your procrastination, the ones that you're not aware of, the fact that you annoy the heck out of most people you meet. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forgive you your sins. Christ died for that. The danger that we have as Christians is by making the law so weak that we make it um, unnecessary for Christ to die to save us from that law and from that sin. You know, if you give me a procrastination sin that I can fix, Christ need not die for that. Yeah. But he did. Yeah. 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 In the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, Father, if there's any other way, yeah. you know, there's no well, way. Well, if people just would manage their time better, then they, would, they could save themselves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. There is another way. Okay. To, how about you go give them 12 steps to not procrastinate? It's like, oh, great. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, okay, okay. So and with that, like